I'm Duncan Peppercorn. I uh, head up the consulting business at yeah. Social Ventures Australia. The SBA Consulting Quarterly came out of a desire to get our learning, get our thinking down on paper and share it more broadly uh, within the sector. Over the first three editions of the quarterly, um, we've thought quite extensively about the role of non-profit boards and what constitutes good behaviour and a good non-profit board. What we are in the business of doing is helping boards to review themselves, to look at themselves, uh, to establish what's working, what's not working within the uh, you know, a framework of what we have seen and experienced as being effective. We all know that the boards of non-profits, getting good people onto the boards of non-profits is a challenge. Uh, according to the best estimates at the moment, there are of the sort of 700,000 odd non-profits uh, here in Australia, many of them very odd. Uh, there are about 59,000 that are of significant scale, about 20,000 of those trade for purpose. So I guess my estimate would be there's, there's multiple hundreds of thousands of Australians sitting on non-profit boards making significant decisions about the directions of those organisations. That is one hell of a lot of people. Now, we all know that sitting on a non-profit board can be a very, very rewarding experience. Uh, it's an opportunity to uh, give back, it's the term that's frequently used, an opportunity to engage with the social issues or, 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 or the challenges of building social capital through the arts or whatever it is. Um, but it's also really challenging. And my contention then is that non-profit boards deserve the very, very best people on them. On a board in the not-for-profit sector or in the big bad world, it's all about the people. A well-constructed board need not only have um, people with wide business experience or government experience or long life experience. There are compelling reasons why some faces with L plates on around a particular not-for-profit board can be really useful. Good boards rarely happen by accident. You have to go and have a conscious process of constructing a decent board. For me, I would go from a position of thinking very much about what is the organisation to do, what is its strategy and mission, and who are the right people. The way that we align organisations, activities and teams against mission, um, for me it's the same with the board. I'd like to suggest that perhaps there's an unexpected or inadvertent advantage to including young people on your boards and that is to promote diversity a little bit beyond age and sex. Not-for-profit organisations represent all of Australian society. Passion is one thing, it's another thing to have passion and to be able to apply it with logic and reason and research around why you're trying to do what you want to do. And as long as that's been applied, then whether it's a young person or an older person, it's kind of irrelevant as long as it's practical and it's useful for the community that you're trying to serve. The role of the chair is to mentor some of these people, and sometimes it's harder to mentor the older director, who cockney feels, I know all about this, don't, I don't want to know anything. Whereas a young person coming on actually wants mentoring, and they want to be helped, and they're open to it. Where have we got skills in the not-for-profit sector and how can we share those amongst the boards of the not-for-profit organisations? There are many people in the room here today who are, are CEOs of not-for-profit organisations. I challenge you to look to your next generation of leaders and think about how are they contributing to other not-for-profit organisations. Are your up-and-coming leaders directors? Are you encouraging them to become directors? Could you learn something from them doing that and getting cross-pollination in the sector? so that we don't only rely on the great and the good and the people who've learned what they've learned in the corporate sector, but we actually start recognising that some of the talent lies here in, in the sector itself and that we could be nurturing that talent.